All right, are you guys ready for this? The shield depletes when taking damage, but regenerates when not under fire. That's liter it's literally just Halo. That's the Halo pistol, same shield, same everything. Correct me if I'm wrong, this is just Halo sound effects. No, no, I know, I recognize where this is from. That's the Rainbow Six Vegas USP. That's what the sound effect is. Hey everyone, as always, Jarek here, and since I got a PSP emulator running, let's cover some more PSP games. Now, I loved this thing, as I mentioned in my previous video, but there were a lot of games that I just did not play on my PSP. I can put this right here, Charizard can hold this, right? Yeah, that works. Most notably, I didn't really play first version shooters on the PSP, because there wasn't a second analog stick. Again, I don't know why Sony did this, there's more than enough space for another one to fit, they just didn't. I'll probably dedicate an entire month to shooters on the PSP. Starting with an interesting one, I have a Halo clone that was originally on iOS, then got ported to PSP. This game is Nova, Near Orbit Vanguard Alliance. And yeah, that's just word salad. And quickly, let me get the elephant out of the room. This is very clearly a Halo clone, but I find that interesting because this game originally launched in 2009. Now, Halo 3 was still very big in 2009, but that was firmly Call of Duty era. I almost find it more interesting that this was not a Call of Duty clone and instead was a Halo clone. That's not a bad thing. If this was a Call of Duty clone, it definitely would have been a lot worse. But again, this game clearly wants to be Halo. That's liter it's literally just Halo. That's the Halo pistol, same shield, same everything. These are just brutes. And yeah, this is just high charity. That was my first thought. Okay, this is literally Halo. Bro, that is just the Halo rocket launcher. Like, I mean, look at that. Trust me, I have more to say on this. I'll get to that when I get to the gameplay. But first, we need to thank today's sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community for people who like to be creative, where millions come together to learn how to improve their creative expression. Skillshare has thousands of classes for people who are creative and curious. There's topics on illustration, design, photography, videos, freelancing, and many more. So Skillshare is for the curious person that wants to learn more. Maybe you have a hobby you want to get into, but you just don't know where to start. Skillshare is here just for that. Skillshare has plenty of classes for all skill levels that will fit your schedule. Most are under 60 minutes and members get unlimited access to the site. The class I'm sharing with you today is Starting a Successful Side Hustle by Ali Abdul. Now this one hits close to home because many of my old fans may remember I used to run a business. That was actually how I got into my YouTube career. I started making videos for my business. But what many people don't know is that while I was doing this, I was working as a lifeguard. The business thing was something I was doing on the side. Eventually, YouTube videos got so successful that I could live on those on their own, but for years that was just a side hustle. In a very similar way, a lot of people ask me, how did you start a YouTube career? How do I start getting successful on YouTube? And I always tell them, you're not going to be seeing that much success for years after you first start. It's almost like starting a new band. That's just something you're doing on the side. So this class is here to teach you exactly how to manage that. I learned all of this through personal experience, you don't have to. So hey, if you want to try out Skillshare, the first 1,000 subscribers that click that link below get a one-month free trial of premium membership. And as always, a huge thanks goes to Skillshare. I love what they do. I'm also doing another giveaway for Dread Templar. I genuinely like this game, and I have a bunch of keys for it, so I'm just going to be giving these away. All you have to do to participate in this giveaway is like, subscribe, and leave a comment below. I'll be choosing the comment that I like the most, nothing specific, just whatever tickles my fancy, and then it will reply to you and send you your key through either Twitter or Discord or whatever is easiest for you. Okay, back to Nova. I guess we'll start with the graphics, and oh boy, this is not a good looking game. Now, I didn't have high expectations. It was originally a mobile game that got ported over to the PSP of all things, but even for a PSP game, it doesn't look very good. On top of this, it only runs at 20 frames per second. I don't mean that it struggles to maintain a frame rate, no, I mean it's capped at 20 FPS. If Killzone Liberation looks like this and stays at 60 FPS, surely Nova could have handled at least 30. So yeah, graphically this game is pretty outdated, even for the PSP. The good news is, aesthetically, it's fine. Of course it'd be fine, it's copying Halo, 
But also, it's really easy to tell whether you're shooting at an enemy or a box. It's pretty easy to pick out details. And as I say, graphics aren't everything, so let's move on. The universe that the story takes place in isn't terrible. It's a bit cliche, but the way the story is told is kind of laughable. You're a Marine commander that gets thrust into action. You need to explore a spaceship and figure out what happened to its crew. Immediately, you are confronted by aliens, and such kicks off a war between an alien race and humans. You can put on some fetch quests here and there by higher up on command, and it's made painfully obvious that they're about to backstab you. All while this is going on, you're getting transmissions from something called Prometheus. And here's where I need to say, my goodness, the writing and voice acting in this game is something special. Here's the problem, Prometheus. I'm trained to be polite and professional to everyone I meet, and also have a plan to kill them. But I can't kill you, which means I can't trust you either. Make sense? What is this writing? <laughs> anyway, right before the military backstabs you, you teleport out of there thanks to Prometheus. And from this point on, the military isn't part of the story anymore. That's as far as it goes. You never get any conclusion involving them. Anyway, as it turns out, Prometheus is an AI that gained sentience. Who would have seen that one coming? When you teleport it into high charity, I mean the alien ship, it's eventually revealed that there are actually two different species of aliens. There are higher up aliens called the judges, and then there are the lower aliens, the ones that you were fighting, that are meant to protect these judges. The judge's job is to give judgment on all species. Do you know why humans were seen as a threat? Because someone accidentally crashed their ship into the alien ship. No, I'm not kidding you. That's the whole reason they started an entire war to try to obliterate the human race. Apparently one person crashing a ship into their ship means the entire race is a threat. That's the justification for all of this happening. Remember, there was a second vessel traveling with the Colonial Pride. It accidentally crash landed on the asteroid and the automated protection system regarded it as a threat. So they just went after all of humanity because of one ship? Eradicate the race responsible. Wow, what a bad story. All of it was just a big misunderstanding, so they tried to kill all humanity. What the f- Anyway, you finally get to these judges, and they pass their judgment on humanity. You have awakened the judges. We shall give our judgment to you, Advocate. We shall spare your race, Advocate. Your people's imperfections make accidents inevitable. But your cowardly leaders shall be rendered unto oblivion. They have pursued greed and power at the expense of their fellows. And that's just the end of the game. Yeah, it's not particularly great as far as story is concerned. But, I mean, at least they tried. I can tell you what happened. That's more than what I can say about a lot of other games that I've played. So let's move on to the gameplay. But before I even talk about the gameplay, I need to talk about the controls. As you already know, there are not two analog sticks on the PSP. Again, Sony, why? So I need to immediately talk about how the controls work. They're pretty self-explanatory. The left analog stick is for movement, and then you aim using the face buttons. X looks down, triangle looks up, square looks left, circle looks right. The left trigger makes you jump. I'm already fairly used to this because I'm used to using bumper jumper in Halo. The right trigger obviously shoots, and then the D-pad does any basic action, throw grenade, reload, swap weapons, stuff like that. Before I discuss how well this worked, there's also an alternate control scheme, and this is basically left-handed control scheme. The face buttons have you move, and the left analog stick is what you use to aim. In a perfect world, this is a better solution because you can aim with an analog stick. In reality, I'm not left-handed and this is just impossible for me. All right, let's try it. Let's try the other uh, control scheme. Oh God, that, that is definitely gonna take some getting used to. Okay, yeah, I, I am not left-handed. There's no way I can do that. <laughs> with that said, I'm actually playing this on an emulator. I'm playing this on PPSSPP. It's a pretty solid emulator that I would recommend if you want to play some PSP games. That's also why this game looks clearer than what would usually be on the PSP. I'm emulating this at a rendered resolution of 1920 by 1080. Anyway, this alternate left-handed control scheme actually allows you to have regular controls in an emulator. If you simply rebind the left analog stick to your right analog stick and then rebind the face buttons to the left analog stick, it's just like anything else, except for you only have eight directions to walk, but still, you can aim with an analog stick and it's pretty normal. That said, 
I didn't do that. I wanted the original PSP experience, so I just aimed using the face button so I could tell you how it feels. Surprisingly enough, this isn't that bad. It took a little bit of getting used to, but once I got used to it, I didn't really think about it. Now, this is largely due to the fact that the aim assist is incredibly strong. And when I say incredibly strong, I mean it basically locks onto the target more or less. Once you've looked at an enemy, you don't need to press those face buttons or track them, it'll do it for you. And that's a good thing because tracking with the face buttons would be really difficult. So overall, I would say these controls controls actually have a passing grade. I played the game, once I got used to it, I didn't even think about it. The bigger problem I had actually wasn't with the aiming, it was with the doing everything else. The problem with everything being on the d-pad is that anytime I want to do a basic function like swapping weapons or reloading, means I have to let go of the movement analog stick to do so. And if I'm wanting to reload or change weapons, I probably have enemies around. Maybe one is rushing me and I'm trying to swap to my shotgun. Obviously, I don't want to stand in place while this is happening. To make matters worse, you can carry more than just two weapons, so if you want to swap to the next weapon, you just have to cycle through all of them. And in this game, you'll get an assault rifle, a shotgun, the halo pistol, the halo rocket launcher, a plasma gun, a sniper rifle, and I think that's it. You don't get too many guns, but you get enough to make this be a problem. And speaking of problem, you think that a sniper would be an odd choice for a game that doesn't have an analog stick to aim with, but they added one anyway. In all reality, this actually worked okay. Probably the worst handling weapon in the game, but it still functioned. The way it worked is that when you press the fire button, you would scope in. This was toggle. At this point, then you can aim with the face buttons and fire like normal. The confusing part I got to was that in order to zoom out, you need to press the jump button, which the game did not tell you. So at first I kind of panicked when an enemy ran at me and I couldn't unscope to swap weapons. Oh. That's, uh... How do I unscoop out of this? No, oh, swap, swap weapons, please. How do I get out of the scope? Like, actually, how do I unscope? Okay, you jump. That's... Those are some controls. But yeah, again, there's some insane aim assist, and while it is slightly awkward to snipe with the face buttons, it worked. And now we move to the gameplay. I don't have much to say. This is a pretty generic game. It does mostly copy off of Halo with recharging shields and just generic weapons. You get a mixture of enemies that rush at you or fire projectiles at you from range. These are both proper non-hitscan projectiles and hitscan, but I never felt like the game was too difficult, too hard, or annoying. Like again, I actually don't have much to say. It's a pretty generic first person shooter as far as the actual gameplay is concerned. The only unique addition in this game is that if you press down on the d-pad, you can freeze enemies in place at the expense of some of your shields and that's as deep as this game is getting. This game will last somewhere between three to four hours, so it's a little bit short for a PSP game, but again, it was a mobile port, so what do you expect? I guess the only twist I can mention is that occasionally there were bosses, but this was nothing more than just shoot their weak spots and then continue. Genuinely, I don't have anything more to say about the gameplay. It is as generic as you would expect a Halo clone to be. And that's not an insult on Halo. I love Halo. So in conclusion, you might assume this is just a bad, boring Halo clone you shouldn't waste your time with. While I think you probably still shouldn't waste your time with it, I also don't think it's bad. Now this game also did come out on PS3, and for a PS3 game, my standards would be a bit higher, so I would be a little disappointed. But for a mobile port to PSP, I mean, I would give this like a 6 out of 10, 6.5 out of 10. I don't think it's worth tracking down and trying yourself, but I wouldn't necessarily hate playing it. If anything, I found it fascinating because I recognized so much of it while not actually recognizing any of it at all. Now, they did make two sequels, Nova 2 and Nova 3, but both were iOS exclusives, although Nova 3 apparently made its way to Android. However, those are mobile games that I, I really just don't care. Apparently, you can't even play Nova 2 anyway at this point. But hey, that's all I have to say about Nova. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. I want to give a big thanks out to everyone that joined me on Twitch. My Twitch is twitch.tv slash jared gaming dragon If you subscribe, you get to see my videos ahead of time. And of course, a big thanks goes to Skillshare. Check that link down below in the video information if you want to try it out yourself. And of course, thank you for watching this video.